Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this is a part of a series on testing, and uh, this time we're going to have a look at the first test, which is done on any new installation, and this is continuity. And uh, by continuity, we're meaning continuity of the protective conductors or the earth wires that are contained within the cables for the circuit. Now, this is, say, the first test that's done, and it's done without any power connected. And on a new installation, the power shouldn't have even been connected at all yet because this is done before any power is put anywhere near the installation. Now, once you've installed a particular circuit, you're going to have your consumer unit here. And inside there, you're going to have the neutral and the earth bars generally at the top there. And your line conductors will go to the appropriate circuit breaker or fuse inside, say one for each of the circuits. And uh, once you've done that, of course, the cables will obviously come out of here. So you're going to have your earth conductor coming out like that. And of course, the neutral from the neutral bar like that. And then the line, say, comes from the fuse or circuit breaker. So in this case, we'll say it's this one here. And again, that would just come out of there and go to whatever equipment you have installed. And in the case of this one here, we're just going to say that this is actually a switch here, or isolator. So we'll just draw inside the uh, actual switch components. This will be a double pole switch. And of course, you're going to have inside the contacts, which will be uh, open in that particular example. And then the piece of equipment this is going on to is going to be, say, an electric shower. And that's just going to have the three terminals inside typically sort of a 8 kilowatt or 10 kilowatt thing stuck on the wall. And again, the wires will just continue from the isolator switch, often a ceiling mounted thing, straight into the piece of equipment there. And of course, the earth conductor or the protective conductor won't actually be uh, switched inside, but there's normally some kind of connection point there. Let's go straight through to the piece of equipment. And the point of the test here is to confirm that this protective conductor here in the green or the earth wire is continuous from here to whatever else is along the line, so the isolator switch in this case, and onto the equipment at the end. And it's the same for all the circuits, so say you had a load of sockets, then again it would go from one to the other in a continuous line. I want to make sure that's continuous, and the same for lights and in fact yeah, pretty much anything else. Now there's a couple of ways you can actually confirm this. And the first way, which is not particularly uh, commonly used, certainly in uh, installations like this, is to take the testing equipment, which will be a device to measure resistance. And we're talking about a very low resistance here because bearing around these are copper wires. And even if they are sort of many tens of meters long, the resistance of that is going to be extremely low in the sort of small numbers of ohms range, and in many cases considerably less than one ohm. So we're going to have a test piece of equipment here with two terminals. Uh, it's going to record the results in ohms. Now the regulations do require that the test current that this thing will put out is at least 200 milliamps. Things like multimeters typically won't put that kind of current out, though you could use one of those if that's uh, all you had. But uh, better to get a specific device designed for the purpose. But uh, essentially it's just connecting the two leads to the two ends of the conductor there. Pressing the button and it will display the resistance in ohms. And in this case, of course, it will be a connection of connecting it to the fitting over here, and then the other wire to the terminal there inside of the electric shower. And that will give you a reading directly in ohms, and you can obviously record that on your test certificate. Now there's a certain problem with doing this in that uh, in this drying room here, of course it's uh, just being drawn in, but in reality this consumer unit is going to be far away from this shower. So it does mean that one of these leads is going to have to be extremely long, possibly in the order of sort of 10 to 20 meters or something. But uh, nevertheless, that's pretty much it. You'll just connect the lead to here. This will be the long one here. And then you take the uh, test equipment and, of course, the short lead, which you can then attach to the various points of each circuit. Another consideration here is that because you're using extremely long leads here, you also need to take into account the resistance of the leads themselves, because, of course, that could actually be significant compared to the resistance of the actual wire you are testing. Uh, most meters have a function whereby if you just connect the two leads together and press a button, it will then record the resistance of that and deduct it from the readings that you get. If it's some ancient old thing which for some reason doesn't do that, then it's a question of connect those two ends together. 
measure the resistance of the leads and then deduct that value from whatever we need to get when testing the circuits. So that's uh, pretty much the most simple obvious way, but say it does involve this rather long wire. You can either just make that up from say a length of cable or whatever, or you can actually buy uh, sort of big rolls of test leads which uh, have the appropriate plug and things on the ends for the meter you're using. Now that's all very well, but there is another way, and that's probably the most common way that's used on certainly smaller installations, and that involves actually using the line conductor here as part of the test circuit, rather than having great long test leads trailing all over the building. And uh, what we need to do here is, uh, first of all, the consumer unit need to install a link temporarily between the line conductor and the earth here, or the protective conductor. And that can either be just like a lead with two uh, clips on each end, or you just put a bit of wire there or something. But uh, essentially what you're doing is connecting here to here temporarily. And for obvious reasons this is done again with the power off, because if the power is turned on in this case, you're basically putting a short circuit there, you're going to uh, trip any circuit breaker or blow the fuse there. But uh, connect those two together, and then the test is done at the end of the circuit, or indeed any isolator or whatever, and you can just connect the two leads from here, one to the protective conductor, and then the other one to the line conductor. So what you're measuring here is the resistance of both the protective conductor and of course the line conductor. And it's very important in these circumstances to make sure that the switches or whatever in the circuit are in the on position, because if you left it as you got here, it would just read open circuit, and I think that was a fault. But of course when you close the switch, that will complete the circuit, and then you will obviously get the appropriate reading. Again, as before, you would need to uh, take into account the resistance of the test leads, because uh, although they are considerably shorter in this case, they still will have some resistance that needs to be taken into account. And uh, for this one, you're going to record, uh, again, the value from that. But it's actually the resistance of both of these wires. So again, you would write that on the certificate in a slightly different place. And we'll look at that uh, a bit later on. But as before, you would simply take the test meter around the building, connect to the uh, terminals in each of the pieces of equipment, and again, record the value. And where you've got several pieces here, you're actually going to test at all of the points. So as well as at the end here inside the shower in this particular case, you would also need to test here at the isolator switch again to make sure that this is connected properly and it hasn't been either left undone or has come out or whatever, become loose. And the value you get here should of course be the highest value because it's measuring the longest part of the circuit. Now for this bit here, so the most common is just to put a temporary wire between those two, something with little uh, crocodile clips on each end is a fairly common choice. Just clips to the uh, two components there. And of course when you finish the test you'll be removing that link and uh, taking that away. Now if you don't have a test lead then uh, it's not actually a problem because what you can do is to remove the conductor from here and temporarily just connect it in there. And then obviously when you finish the test you would subsequently just put it back in the appropriate circuit breaker. When you've finished, again it's achieving the same result, connecting the two together. However what you do not ever do is to leave this in here and then remove this from here and then temporarily connect it in there. And the reason being that if this was left in this state, if you turn this on, you've basically made all of the protective conductor and the metal work and everything attached to it live. So of course that's a very dangerous situation, so uh, that is never done, so we'll just remove that uh, quickly there. So putting the temporary link across is fine, because again there shouldn't be any power here, but at, uh, if there was for some reason, if the temporary link was still in place, it's just going to trip the circuit breaker or blow the fuse, so that's not uh, too much of a problem, doesn't leave any kind of dangerous situation up here. And again, if this was just connected in there temporarily, and somehow this became turned on, well, there's going to be no power at all, so again, not a problem. But uh, anyway, you certainly don't want to remove the protective conductors from there and then start connecting them to something else. Now, in terms of actually recording those results, uh, what we're going to be recording is the highest value, which you should find is at the end of the circuit, so basically as far away from the consumer unit as possible. If you find it's massively high in one place and then it gets lower later on, then come time a problem has occurred, so that would certainly require investigation. Now if you've done the first method where you're actually measuring the resistance of the protective conductor directly, then what you've actually measured is called the R2 value. So essentially that is just the uh, protective conductor itself. And you'll simply write that value in the appropriate box on the certificate that you're filling in. 
But if you do the other one, which is using the line conductor and the protecting conductor to form a circuit, then you're not just measuring the R2 value, you're actually measuring what's called the R1 value plus R2. So that's basically the line conductor and the uh, circuit protective conductor. And again, you'd write that on the appropriate place on the certificate. Most certificates have columns for both of these, but generally you're going to be filling in one of these things. It would be rather foolish to uh, to do this test here and then do this test again because essentially you're measuring the same thing. So it's one or the other, generally not expecting to see both. If you found a certificate where both had been filled in, then uh, that would be cause for concern because it would imply that someone's just gone down and filled in any old numbers in the columns and didn't really know what they were doing. Now, if you're going to do this one, which say is probably the most common choice because it doesn't uh, require that great long test lead to be trailed all over the building, then uh, this has an added bonus in that uh, because you're measuring the line conductor as well, this also does polarity at the same time. And by polarity, what we're meaning is that uh, line and neutral are in the correct places. And of course you can confirm this because you're testing between the line and the protective conductor. So if the polarity had been reversed at some point along the circuit, and then you'd be actually be testing between the neutral and protective conductor, that would show as open circuit. And then obviously you would investigate and find out where the incorrect connection had been made. You can also use this to confirm that uh, things like light switches, which are single pole, are connected in the line conductor only. Because again, if you go to the light switch and you're testing between the line wire there and the protective conductor, you should have continuity. If you don't, then it means that the wire at the light switch is actually in neutral. And again, that's uh, incorrect because light switches and things will need to be switched in the line only. And again, the same thing, say the light fixture or whatever, you can confirm that the wires that go out to the switch are in fact connected to the line conductor, which is has continuity with the protective one when doing the test. So it's quite a useful one. It does uh, the polarity test at the same time for pretty much no extra effort. Now for the various types of things you'll encounter, uh, socket outlets. Typically you can test those via the front of the socket using some kind of adapter. Typically just with a test lead and a standard plug on the end. And you do need to remember that the uh, sockets do need to be switched on because you're kind of testing between the line and of course the protective one. And if the switch is off again it's not going to show as any kind of result, so switches need to be switched on. Uh, light switches and other things uh, do need to be opened. So you will need to remove them from the wall. And then you'll test on the back to the terminals directly. And again, the same things with a say, ceiling rose or other light fixture. It is necessary to remove the cover and actually do the test uh, between the terminals inside. If it's a pendant item, you can't test at the actual end because of course there's no earth connection there normally. Most pendants are actually made of plastic and only have the line in neutral. And uh, for other things, uh, say it was a electric shower like we saw there, then just a question of uh, leaving the front of the shower off and just testing again between the terminals that are inside. And you can do the same with other fixed equipment such as say immersion heaters and other types of things which are permanently wired in. And in most cases just a question of removing the cover and just testing at the terminals inside. Now for a cooker circuit, which would be a freestanding item generally wired in, if it's a new installation it's quite likely that the actual cooker itself hasn't been delivered or hasn't arrived yet. So uh, if you've got an outlet plate on the wall you can just simply take off the cover and test in there. And again, you would need to make sure that any isolator was in fact switched on. But again, it's the same problem as with the sockets. If it's not turned on, then it's not going to be continuous through with the line conductor. So for all of these, you do need to make sure that uh, switch are in the on position. As saw with the shower earlier, we'll see if it's in the off position, then the line has no continuity. Now on a new installation there generally wouldn't be any kind of things like lamps or whatever installed, but if there were lamps fitted then you would need to remove those. And you need to remove the lamp because if it's an old sort of filament type lamp it's going to show as a very low resistance between line and neutral, and if polarity was reversed you could actually test between the protective conductor and neutral and still get a reading because you'd actually be testing through the lamp itself. 
similar thing could happen if you had a cooker or shower or whatever attached but in most cases these things have to be actually turned on at the front with a switch so uh, it's not generally continuity there when it's in the off position or if there is if it's just like a little electronic clock or something then it's not going to show up on the ohm meter that you're using to do the test. So that's continuity testing relatively straightforward but again does need to be done at each and every individual outlet so on a large installation it can take a certain amount of time to do and you can also use the same procedure there for testing the main bonding conductors which are the ones that go for say from the consumer unit or earthing terminal to any extraneous conductive parts such as the gas supply or the water pipes coming in and it's pretty much the same thing you will need to use the long test leads for that one so again connect the long lead to the earthing terminal at the consumer unit and then you can test between that lead and the uh, actual conductor at the end where it's connected to the incoming pipe but uh, same thing applies and again you record the resistance value as appropriate and uh, something else to be concerned there is that uh, the potential conductor inside the cable may not be the only path for the actual current particularly if you're going to use something like metal conduit of course the conduit itself will be connected to the earth conductor so uh, if you can measure at the end say the socket you could actually be measuring the conduit as well as any wires within the conduit itself and in those situations you'll find that the values are significantly lower because of course you've got more than one path back to the earthing terminal and again that stem applies for sort of armoured cables with the sort of steel wire armour on the outside or the metal clad uh, varieties such as the uh, pyro or thims as it's also called which again is a, essentially a copper tube with the other conductors contained inside so uh, that's continuity and if you're doing ring circuits uh, that particular test is not necessary because it's actually covered in the ring circuit testing and we've already done a video on that which you can see in the series with this one. So until next time, thanks for watching.